Hi. Um, so I wanted to just show you some new features that I've added to my CSV import package. These are going to be released very shortly, but here's a quick preview. First one is uh, password hashing. So let's say you've got a CSV file with a bunch of users. In fact, I've got one. Here's one I made earlier and uh, it's not very secure, but you can see their passwords are here in plain text and we want to import those into our database. Uh, onto here. If I could do the thing, that would be great. And we can upload those. Okay, so we can see all of that data in our preview. And we want to match that up to one of our resources. So we're going to match it up to users. And then we get the fields already mapped just because they coincidentally uh, align with the, the table columns and the CSV columns are the same. So that's great. We haven't had to do any work yet. And the only other thing that we want to do is to add a modifier, the new password hash value modifier. And what this does is it gives you the hash facade algorithms that are available from Laravel. Nice link to the documentation here as well. So there you go. Um, and you can choose one of these, whichever one makes sense for you. It also tells you what your current configuration one is uh, according to your application, which is great. Yeah, let's just see what happens. There we go. So it's actually hashed every single one of those passwords. Now, before I go any further, I want to do two things. One, I want to show you what the database currently looks like. This is the database for this, you'll have to believe me, my Nova Playground. And these passwords, you, if I refresh this page, it doesn't do anything fancy. But it rehashes. So every time it reloads, you'll see that they change, but the underlying password in the file is not changing. So that's just evidence that it's hashing freshly every time. Um, obviously, if you're running this on a lot of data, that is going to be slow because hashing is intentionally slow. But we'll put that to one side. Hopefully, you don't actually ever need to do this because that would mean that you've got password in a file and that's really not good security. So, you know, you do you. This is a tool that's useful in very rare circumstances, hopefully. Anyway. So we want to import these. When we go to import them, the values that are imported will not be these either. So there's absolutely no way for somebody to think that what has been shared on screen or anything like that is in any way insecure. The, the hashing algorithm will run again and these values will all be different. So there's no way we can compare these. But one thing we can do, let's just import these users. What we can do is check the database. So we refresh that. We can see all of those. Uh, and we take one of these as an example. Now, we don't know the password because it's been hashed. You know, assuming if somebody looking at the database, they can't see the password. But we know what the password should have been. So we can log in as that user. So let's do that. What was the password? Let's go back and see what it was. So who are we? John Doe. Really secure password. Nad. Um, and log in. Hey, presto, we can log in. Cool. That's that one. Okay. So the next feature that I want to show you is that you can generate random strings. So this could go in hand in hand with the password file. So let's uh, go back to that for a second. And instead of just hashing the value that's given to us in the file, I actually just want to ignore all of those passwords entirely. I don't want to know the passwords. So what I'm going to do is actually, instead of it being the password value from the file, I'm going to use a randomly generated value. And I'm going to set the length of that to 16. And then I'm going to hash that, right? So that's what we're going to do here. So now the password will be something we don't know at all because we'll never see it. So I'm going to log out here. I'm going to delete these users. Remember not to delete me. All right, so they're gone. And now if I try and log in again uh, as John do at example.com with that password. And we can't log in. There's no credentials. We've just deleted it. Fine. And we know we think the password could be this, but we want to change it to randomly generated value. So <clears throat> let's 
preview what that's going to be. The thing is, every time we do this now, not only are we randomly are we using the hashing algorithm that's going to randomly hash these, we're also generating a random password every single time. So we'll never have a chance to know what this is going to be. Well, let's import it. See what happens. Okay, all successfully done. Let's check the database. Yep, they're in there. Let's try and log in with the password that we had before, just so that you know I've got that on my copy paste. No, it won't let me log in. There's absolutely no way. This user would now have to go through a password reset and hopefully they get an email, etc., etc. Pretty cool. Let's have a look at the random string generator without the hashing so we can see what's going on. Let's get rid of that. Okay, so here you go. Random strings generated. Length of 16. And again, every time we refresh, look at that. They keep changing. Great. So we know that that's happening randomly every time a row is pulled out of our file, we're generating a new random value, which is cool. Great, that's that. Last one, this one's slightly complicated. So I'm gonna do an, a new import and I've got another file somewhere. Right, I've just magically pulled in this lat long file that I didn't have in the right place. And what I, what I want to do here is demonstrate the fact that this file has got two columns for two bits of data and I want to pull them together. We've got a column in our database that just expects coordinates. So I want to combine those two fields when I import them. So let's do that. Take that along, pop that there, upload and configure. Right, let's, we want this to go into our units table. We want to combine values from multiple columns. And this is the combinator, right? So what do we do here? We have a separator. So we decide how the columns should be attached together. If we choose no separator, they'll be treated as an array. And that will be up to our model to handle how that gets cast. But if we just want a string, we can use one of the string separators. And then the, however many columns are going to be treated as a concatenated string. So I'm going to do this with custom, so not space, not tab, custom. And I'm going to put a comma. And I'm going to say I want lat and then I want long. I'm not going to do anything special to these. That's it. So I just want to see these two values coming in as a single value separated by a comma. So we should see 56.53 comma minus 5.98. Okay, save and preview. And there we go. A one value that's going to go into our database. It's import. Successful. And there it is. Nice combined value. Um, and one of the cool things that I like about what, we, what I've done here is that you can use modifiers on top of that combination. So if you wanted to do something funky later on, like you know, prefixing with uh, I, this will actually probably won't work because I, whatever, but, um, you know, if you wanted to get fancy, you could put a point field around it and do, uh, I think you'd probably have to have that space separated and we can save and preview that. And you can see that this is kind of what would be attempted to be written to the database. It won't work in this case. Um, so there's that. So that's cool. And I'm really pleased with it. You can reorder these. So just like you can do with modifiers, although prefix and suffix won't make any difference because they'll just happen. Um, but then you could do, let's just get really silly. Let's, uh, oh, it's name case, we'll fix that one. Gross, that's all I wanted to show you.